Do you want to max out your vocation? Well, recently we made a video showing off some awesome farms where you can get XP, discipline, and money all combined together. But in this one, we wanted to focus on just farming discipline points and to talk about stat growth as there is a lot of misinformation out there. So we wanted to give you guys some tips to help you have a bunch of fun and avoid making some common mistakes. So with stats being heavily tied to your leveling, and if you want to be as strong as possible, then you'll need to learn how these things interact. And don't worry, we have you covered, so just watch this video. Video. And if you have any extra tips to help out your fellow community members, put it down below in the comments. And let's jump into it with the first thing to know, which is the difference between XP and Discipline. So your XP is what allows your character to level up, and this does impact your base stats, giving you additional stats based on your currently equipped vocation. Earning XP does not increase the vocation level though, and something else to know is that there are stat caps for the individual stat attributes once you get to a high enough level. As this can get a little confusing, a simple way to boil it down is if you're playing a warrior, you will gain a ton of strength. Meanwhile, if you're playing as a sorcerer, you will gain a ton of magic. This also applies to the hybrid classes, with the mystic spearhand giving you a balance in strength and magic. Meanwhile, the trickster will give you a ton of defense and magic defense as its priority. So each vocation has a different inclination to the different stat attributes. Now, while this is important to players that will want to min-max and get the highest stats possible during your leveling process, the game actually has a system in place whereby the stats for every vocation will start to cap out, and this seems to happen around the level 200 mark for most players, give or take 10 levels. Obviously, for the majority of players, you won't even be leveling past 200 anyway, so this won't be a concern for the majority, but it is still good information to have. A Reddit post from Aqua Ren actually shows that the base stats are normalized to the same amounts once you reach the cap on them. You can see in this picture here where they leveled up both the Thief and Mage to 200 and the stats are capped the same when playing the same vocation as shown with the gold color of the stats. We haven't been able to confirm this ourselves as it does take a long time to level up highly on multiple saves but based on our research and the community's takeaways for this this seems to be the current understanding of how stat growth works. So basically the TLDR version of this is is that you can level up however you want to because all of your stats will be capped and will normalize together around level 200 anyway, meaning you will have the same stats at the uber late game as someone else regardless of what you leveled up. But it will impact your stats as you're leveling, so pick your poison. So now let's go back to discipline points because these are definitely more impactful at the early vocation levels as earning this is needed to purchase those new skills, core skills and abilities for your vocation. So if you wanted to try out a new vocation and try out a bunch of cool moves when you switch over, you will want to get as much discipline points as possible as quickly as possible to gain access to those new moves and level up that vocation. Here are a few things you need to know before farming. There aren't that many ways to increase your discipline points earned from battle compared to XP when you consider that they have the Medusa bow that gives around a 400% increased modifier to your XP. But there is a ring that you can get that will increase your discipline points gain Gained, but does require a ton of seeker tokens which kind of defeats the purpose of it anyway as by the time you've collected that many tokens naturally you will have definitely maxed out every class anyway. You can also use the warfarer to level up all of the vocations at the same time but people have worked out that it seems to only share 50% of your discipline points across the other classes which basically equates to every class getting 5% of the discipline you're farming. This also is shared to other vocations that you have already maxed out. So at the end of the day, this isn't super efficient. It means if you want to max out a specific vocation, you are much better off playing as that vocation so 100% of your discipline will go towards leveling it up. Also, the Warfarer doesn't get access to the class ultimate skills, so if you want to use them, you're better off playing those vocations as well. It's important to note if you are in New Game Plus, you can also visit the Dragon Forged vendor located here on the map. He will give you access to a buff that can last for a full day, giving you increased XP or discipline points. So you can pick one of these up depending on what you're farming for. Both of these buffs seem to give double the amount that you earn, so they're actually really good if you have access to them. You may also want to consider doing the Dragon Forged upgrade on your favorite skills, as this will half the stamina cost of a skill on your vocation. This is fantastic for certain skills that are super stamina heavy, like the Mystic Spearhand's Wild Fury. When it comes to farming discipline points, you will want to know that it is kind of a quantity over quality situation, which is interesting because many of us in our gamer brains will be 
thinking that taking out a big bad boss will mean giving a ton of discipline, when in reality killing a bunch of smaller mobs in a higher density will earn you way more discipline over time. For example, if you kill a Cyclops or a Minotaur, you will get between 100 to 250 discipline. But of course, that does take longer to defeat than a camp of smaller goblins where each one will net you 50 to 70. So by simply killing a couple of common goblin spawns, you will gain more discipline than spending the time to defeat a Cyclops or a Minotaur or any of the bigger monsters. Also, these small camps of goblins and enemies are very common all around the map, so they're super easy to run between. The best thing you can do for farming is to find an area packed with smaller creatures like the goblins or harpies, and just run around in that area slaughtering all of them. So you can run around Batal or the Volcanic Island if that's your preference, to farm up discipline, but we've actually found some areas that you may want to pick to get some discipline even more quickly or in a quick burst. One of our favourite spots is very conveniently placed next to the Volcanic Island camp. If you head out of the main camp door and up the hill, you will see a ton of enemies fighting each other. Each enemy here seems to give over 70 discipline points per kill, and they're relatively easy to take on. The great thing about this spot is that the enemies will also call for reinforcements, causing even more to appear, meaning even more discipline to farm. We normally get around 1,500 to 3,000 discipline points per run of this area. You can also respawn the enemies here by just resting on a bench for a couple of days or resting in an inn for a couple couple of days. Another great location is Drabnir's Grotto. This place is filled with smaller enemies that will give you a bunch of discipline in that higher level bracket. There's also a ton of loot that can be found in this cave too, so you should probably go here anyway. Essentially, you could bounce between this grotto and the enemies outside the Volcanic Island camp, as there's a bunch of enemies in between these two locations as well, with bandits and other goblins, so this whole area is super easy to take out and farm. Another option you have is to simply just run around the roads in Batal, as this area has so many goblin camps littered throughout, you will still get a bunch of discipline points, it will just be slightly slower than going to the volcanic island, but because it is just so easy in this area, and the fact that there are so many enemy spawns throughout, you could just run around this area and this might be your best bet for an easy discipline farm. On top of this, the area by the Trickster Meister the Oracle has a bunch of enemies from goblins to humans, making this also a great spot to focus on when running around looking for enemies. While you do this, we also suggest recruiting some thief pawns in your party with plunder, as they are able to pretty consistently steal from the smaller enemies. On top of this, with skills like Skull Splitter, they deal a ton of damage and just help you take those enemies out even faster. Don't forget, thieves also have the Implicate skill, so they can pull down aerial targets like Harpies, and Smoke Shroud is kind of OP, because you can basically use it to execute smaller enemies inside the smoke. But as mentioned, that Plunder skill is fantastic, because you can just passively get a ton of golden items as you're farming discipline points anyway. So there you have it, a bunch of ways to farm discipline points and how the stat growth works. We hope this helped you out, and if it did, drop a like down below, because it really does help. And subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2, coming your way very soon.